he takes it over there to eat it safely. He does that in the house too. He'll take his little snack and he'll take it into his cage. Oh, gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. She got them all. So we've got a lot of peaches coming in and I have been out harvesting peaches pretty much every day and it is just absolutely crazy how many peaches we have. So I'll show you the trees are still loaded. I just wanted to get the weight off the tree. The sunset is so nice here. So I just wanted to get the weight off the tree because they're just getting so big and overloaded and it's actually started to push over my hockey net trellis here. But there are still tons of peaches on these trees. But this is a manageable amount now. Sorry if this is hard to see. I'll try to not swing the camera. Try to keep it steady. And you see another branch came down. So I've been thinning these a ton. The places where I put supports were good. I thought this branch was totally fine, but it came down. And I've really thinned off of this branch here. Probably took three quarters of the peaches off that branch. There's still lots, as you can see. But yeah, this tree lost a branch as well. Actually, well, I mean, it lost two. It lost the first one and then it lost another one. So we got two branches off this one, two branches off the one behind me, which isn't terrible. I'll just prune this and clean it up at the end of the year. The tree should, should be okay with that. But we still have a ton of peaches. We've got another tree loaded up way down in the bottom there, down in the, the area that I, the wild garden. And it has just about as many peaches as this. So then we've got three more peaches here, one, two, and three. So I'm a little concerned that as the years go by, we are going to have a bit of an issue with how much fruit we actually have to pull out of this food forest. And this one here has, I think, three peaches, one there, two here. And I think that's it. But this one did really well for growth this year. And then this one, little baby's got a couple peaches on it too. I just want to taste these ones. I should probably pull those off. They're just sapping the tree, but I'm not going to. I know what I should do, but I'm not going to do it anyway. But the food forest is really, really, really productive this year. Especially considering how bad this year was for weather. Basically 40 days of no rain followed by 50 or 60 days of every single day rain. Like including today. Every day. At least we got a little sun today. It's been a weird year. Farmers around here are saying they're getting 10% harvest. So make sure that if you're not growing food that you're... I don't want to say like I'm not big enough to cause panic but you want to be stocking up because there might be food shortage issues coming up. So definitely get your pantries full because um, it was a very, very difficult year for those of us growing food. But the perennial systems, very robust, obviously producing a ton. We pulled buckets of currants and raspberries. Very good year for those. Our hazelnuts are just totally loaded up. So it's going to be a fantastic year for us for the perennials. Our annuals is going to be an average year. Average to poor. So here's a little update of the pond. I'll just do a quick little update walk around. Try to keep this video fairly short. The pond is doing great. We'll go take a look at that fig. Because I know you guys love seeing updates on the fig. Those of you in my zone. Maybe even within an hour or two of me. You guys are always asking, show me the fig, show me the fig. So that's kind of exciting and interesting. But uh, some of these uh, native plants that I put around, the wetland plants, they're starting to flower. 
so we're just always getting a different different flowering um, plants really beautifying the spot so fig tree is doing great and we've got figs growing I don't know if you can see them oh, covering them up see so we got some figs growing a couple more there so they grow at these crotch angles there right at the right at the uh, the crotch of the tree there oh and I have to show you something so cool I'm just totally getting distracted but I keep meaning to show you guys this and I don't know anyone if you guys know water lotus so this is lotus this is a um, edible so you can eat the leaves the tubers it actually produces tubers and you can eat all that stuff but one of the coolest things about this is that it is a hydrophobic plant so what do I mean by that look at this this sec So here's the compost pile that we did, the kind of next level compost. And one thing I forgot that I did was I took some of my weaker seedling starts and I just plugged them around the outside of this compost pile. And believe it or not, I mean, it's not too hard to believe, but these ended up being easily my strongest plants. So we've got, I don't even know if you can see the tomatoes even crawling up in there. We've got lots of squash um, and melons in there. And then behind this compost pile, here we've got the Hugo culture mound that I started at the same time and you can see the melons and everything are just taking off. So this is fairly fresh compost uh, and manure that was put on top of the wood logs and these uh, plants have absolutely done amazing and I haven't watered these once this year. Uh, complete and utter neglect and they're thriving. And here we've got the grapes that are just doing amazing and we've been eating these um, believe it or not, probably within three or four days, every single grape here will be gone. As soon as these start turning color, it's a race to get these before the uh, birds get them. So you can see some of these are just fantastic right now. And they're, um, they're quite a sweet taste, but they've got a decent sized seed. Unfortunately, I can't tell you guys what variety these are. And I kind of don't want to because they're good, but they're not great. So they are grapes and I can grow them here. They're more of a foraging grape, probably make some juice or um, grape jelly out of them. But to be honest, the taste, the taste is great. The size is not, the size is not great. Um, the taste is awesome, but they've got, they got decent seeds in them. And I'll be the first to admit I am not a grape expert. I basically know nothing about grapes. Um, but they're just putting on so much. This one plant in particular, it's really strange where a grape, you know, every third or fourth grape in clusters will just completely rot and be terrible. I'm guessing that's some kind of insect that's burrowing into it and then eating it and then it dies because of that. But um, this plant, for example, we haven't really been taking too many clusters from we're just going to leave these for the birds pretty much but they are putting on a ton of food so whether or not i get these or whether or not just these go to the birds um, i think that that is just a fantastic a fantastic boon to my food forest in entirety that's it i just wanted to do a quick little update tour for those of you who want to see more gardening videos i'll make sure i put out tons and tons and tons of gardening videos just leave that at there for now and i'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching